Before computers and electronic calculators, there were mechanical calculation machines. This talk is about the forgotten history of one of those, the comptometer, the most popular one of all time. It all started with Dor Eugene Felt, and when he was in his mid-twenties, he created a prototype calculation machine, inspired by one of the automatic planing machines in his workshop. And it was this was made of a macaroni box and meat skewers and rubber bands and anything else he needed. And it showed that the idea worked. And after a few years of development, he produced this first commercial version of the Comptometer in 1888. It's mechanically fairly simple. There, there are long levers along the length of the machine. At the front there's a numeral wheel. And the button near the front moves the lever a little bit, turn the numeral wheel uh, one step. The button at the back is closer to the pivot of that lever and moves the wheel nine steps. And now he still had to uh, sell it, so he found a financial backer, Robert Tarrant, and together they set up the Felt and Tarrant Manufacturing Company. They, it seemed that they had very little in common, except for a love for fishing, as this photo sh photograph shows. So now Dorfeld had to try and sell this machine, and over the next 15 years he, he uh, produced just over 6,000 of them. There are only about 100 of these m machines remaining. They were quite expensive, $125 then, which is equivalent to $4,000 now. And it was very difficult to sell them. He only sold uh, 100 in the first three years. But eventually it's, the ball started rolling a little bit and uh, they started selling. Well, it started to go a little better wi when he redesigned the machine. Uh, this is the Model A. And, uh, yeah, this had several improvements over the wooden version, apart from metal, the metal case and uh, various uh, other things. The, the main uh, improvement was that you could press more than one button at the same time. You could press one button in each column to, to enter a number, uh, all the digits of a number at the same time. Let me just show you how uh, arithmetic works on this machine. Addition is almost trivial. You just enter the numbers you add, want to add, and they're added automatically. As soon as you release the keys, the number gets added to the register. So to add several numbers, you just enter several uh, enter all those numbers that you want to add. As I said before, you can enter the digits at the same time. Subtraction is a little bit more complicated. The wheels only turn one way, so to subtract you have to let the wheel wheels go uh, all the way around the clock. In other words, this means you have to add the tens complement. So instead of subtracting 103, you add 997897 because then the, the wheels uh, turn around all the way and it gives you the right number. Unfortunately though it does have this one overflow of a, a digit all the way at the left. Uh, but that can be uh, remedied because they, there are also these small uh, buttons at the front which can block a carry from one, one row to the next, from one column to the next and that means you don't have to prefix your number with a lot of nines and you get rid of this one overflow. Multiplication is it's just repeated addition. Yes, if you enter a number three times you've multiplied it by three you can then shift over a column to the left to add multiples of ten of that number so multiplying by thirteen in this case or twenty-three is fairly easy. Division is done with uh, long division essentially, uh, but here it gets a little bit clever. You dividing by 12, you essentially subtract 12 on the in the leftmost columns, 
but this time you don't use those uh, carry uh, suppression buttons at the front so when it, as you subtract uh, your uh, number in each column several times you leave behind a trail of these overflows and that exactly uh, tells you how many times you've subtracted in each column and that way you build up the quotient the last two digits in this case share the number 3 which is the remainder of the division so th this model was a lot better than the previous and it, it sold in better numbers this time instead of uh, about uh, 6,000 in, in 15 years it now sold about uh, two or 3,000 a year uh, in this model and the subsequent models for yeah in a period of 12 years but the real breakthrough came with the next model, the Model F, in 1915. Mechanically it was slightly better, it had an error detection mechanism, but the real reason why it was so popular is because of the First World War, the Great War. A lot of uh, men were now at the fighting at the front, so all these places in the offices for bookkeepers and... Uh, yeah computers, they were replaced by um, computometers, often mostly uh, by tr with trained women who, who operated those. So a lot of women started entering the workplace. And as this advert says, more work and to do and fewer to do it, there's no dodging the issue, the call to arms is thinning office forces. The conservative, male-dominated back offices were now be becoming dominated by women. And this is what the modern bus business office started to look like in 1920. Rows and rows of women operating these comptometers. And starting with that Model F uh, and the, the subsequent models, they, s they sold 8,000 a year over a period of, of 25 years. So 200,000 of them were sold. And to su supply all the people who could use these machines, they were opened, uh, Felton Town started opening comptometer schools. They'd always done a little bit of training, but now it was becoming serious. They uh, had a, a hundred schools in the US. There were schools in, in all the major cities of Europe, uh, as shown here in Paris and in Copenhagen. There were there were six schools in, in India and, and six in Australia. They, they trained 20,000 people a year in the US alone. And this made Felton Tarrant's manufacturing company, it was the largest private educational establishment in the world at that time. But, yeah, it, it, they even uh, had this uh, magazine showing all the things that these comptometer operators did during their office hours and outside. But things couldn't really last, so in the th late 30s to and up to the 50s and 60s things started to decline. A uh, Dorfeld died in 1930 and he, he'd resisted going electric for years but yeah now they came out with an electric model. It didn't do uh, as well because it wasn't as durable other mechanical models didn't sell as well either. There was a lot of competition from other companies in Europe and uh, the Second World War and, and the recovery afterwards in Europe basically closed uh, the market to the American companies. So yeah, eventually in 1961 uh, Felton Tarrant was bought out by uh, Victor Adding Machines. So that was the end of the comptometer as, as we know it. The, this type of calculator lasted a bit longer. The very first uh, fully electronic calculator was of a comptometer type with that type of keyboard. But yeah, once computers came in, it was over. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed this talk. If you want to see more, go to my website.